abdominoplasty. What is the procedure and how is it performed? Abdominoplasty is a major surgical procedure that is done to remove excess skin, fat, and other under the skin tissues from the abdomen. In most cases, it also involves tightening the abdominal muscles by pulling them together with sutures or stitches. The procedure is usually done under general anesthesia in a hospital setting. This means you are unconscious and pain-free. The surgery may last from two to five hours. The surgeon makes an incision or a cut between the hip bones. The incision is angled down towards the pubic area in the middle. Another incision is made around the navel or belly button. The skin is then separated from the abdominal wall by raising a flap up to the level of the lower ribs. Fat and excess tissues are removed. In most cases, the muscles of the abdominal wall will then be tightened and pulled together with sutures. These sutures may be brought out through the skin so that they can be removed after the muscles have healed. The skin flap is then stretched tightly downward and excess skin is removed. A new hole is made to reposition the navel. Drains are placed through the skin to remove any fluid or blood collections that form after the incision is closed. A dressing is applied and the patient is taken to the recovery room. If the excess skin and fat is confined to the area below the navel, a less extensive procedure called a partial abdominoplasty may be considered. In a partial abdominoplasty, all the surgery is confined to the area below the navel. This surgery can be done as an outpatient. The recovery period is much shorter and the risk of complications is less. You should ask your surgeon if this procedure is an option for you. Why is this procedure performed? Abdominoplasty is done to restore a more aesthetically pleasing contour to the abdomen. The procedure should be limited to cases in which diet and exercise are not able to achieve the desired outcome. It is suggested that you should be within 20 to 30 percent of your ideal body weight at the time of surgery. If you are planning to lose weight, you should delay the procedure. This is not obesity surgery. The most common reason this procedure is done is to correct the stretching of the skin and muscles that often result from multiple pregnancies. Although rare, there are significant risks and complications to abdominoplasty and the recovery period may last up to four weeks or more. You should be aware that all the complications are increased if you are a smoker. You will need to quit smoking or at least avoid smoking for a month before and after the surgery. Some types of prior abdominal surgeries may increase the risk of complications and you should discuss any previous abdominal surgery with your surgeon. If you're planning any future pregnancy, you should delay having the surgery. Any history of heart disease, diabetes, obesity, or blood clots in your legs may make you more prone to post-operative problems and you should discuss these with your surgeon. Finally, with any cosmetic procedure, it is important to have realistic expectations. The goals, limitations, and expectations of the procedure should be discussed openly and in detail with your surgeon. Except for some cases in which a hernia is part of the procedure, your insurance will probably not cover the cost of this surgery. What should I expect after surgery? After surgery, you should expect to spend one to three days in the hospital. Initially, you will be on a bed rest, but as soon as you are able, you will be encouraged to get out of bed to walk. You will notice that at first, it will be hard to stand up straight. Early walking helps the muscles heal and makes it less likely that any blood clots will form in your legs. Once you are stable, you can go home. You should have someone to drive you and to stay with you for the first few days. 
Your drains may be removed before discharged, or you may be sent home with them still in place. You will be limited to sponge baths until the drains and dressings are removed. After that, you may take showers, but no baths for two weeks. You may continue to have a significant amount of pain for one to two weeks. The pain medicine, as prescribed by your doctor, should be taken. Skin sutures are removed at about five to seven days. If you have deep muscle sutures, these may remain for two to three weeks. You can eat whatever you want, but you may need to take laxative for one to two weeks. The combination of the pain pills and sore abdominal muscles may cause constipation. Continue your walking at home. Your surgeon may suggest some non-strenuous exercises. Although mild exercise is important for your recovery, you should avoid any vigorous activity for six weeks. Elastic stockings and or elastic binding worn around the abdomen may be recommended for a few weeks after surgery. Most patients can go back to work within two weeks. If your job is physically demanding, you should wait four to six weeks. Your scars may remain raised and or discolored for up to nine months. There are also particular risks associated with this procedure. These risks include, but are not limited to, bleeding. Bleeding and or the accumulation of fluid under the skin are common complications, three to four percent. Your surgeon may need to insert a needle under the skin to drain areas where blood or fluid has collected. Infection. Infection may delay wound healing. If you have persistent fever, or if you notice any redness, discharge, or swelling in the areas of your incisions, you should notify your surgeon immediately. Delayed wound healing. This may result in death of the skin near the incisions. In rare cases, incisions may separate. The skin around the navel may die. These complications may require a second surgical procedure to remove dead skin. A skin graft may be needed. External scarring. Scars that are stretched may become thick and unsightly. This is more common in people with darker skin. These scars, called keloids, can be treated, but this may require scar revision surgery. Deformities. Abnormal position of the navel, scar depression with soft tissue bulging above the scar, and elevation of pubic hair may occur. Treatment of these deformities may involve a second surgical procedure. Nerve damage. Damage to nerves that supply the abdomen may result in permanent numbness or the formation of painful, abnormal nerve cells called neuromas. Blood clots. Blood clots that form in the vein of the legs may break off and go into the lungs. Pulmonary embolism. These complications are very rare, but can be life-threatening. Risks associated with general anesthesia. There are risks involved with any anesthesia, and you should discuss them with your anesthesiologist. Before you agree to any operative procedure, it is important to remember that each patient is different and that the outcome of any surgical procedure can never be guaranteed. You should understand that there may be complications that have not been mentioned and that it is not possible to anticipate all complications or to answer each and every question. Again, you should be aware that in the practice of medicine, unforeseen and unexpected risks or complications not previously discussed may occur. You should also understand that during the course of proposed procedures, unforeseen conditions may be revealed requiring the performance of additional procedures, and such procedures may need to be performed. Keep in mind that there is no substitute 
for an open and honest discussion with your own surgeon or physician regarding this procedure. You should also be given any available treatment alternatives to this procedure by your doctor, some of which may include medication. Be sure to discuss any questions or concerns with your doctor.